you kind of mentioned the Chiefs, and um, I, to me, um, you know, going to just wide receivers now. Uh, when when I think of the Chiefs in free agency, you know, you mentioned Samuel Watkins as a free agent. I mainly think Curtis Samuel. I think Curtis Samuel would be an amazing fit with the Chiefs. I mean, he's a speedster um, wide receiver like you know the Chiefs have with Hardman and Tyree Kill. Somebody else to me, and I, I know you know there's a chance he may retire even. I really, really like the Sean Jackson of the Chiefs, too. I mean, you know, he's getting up there in age. I believe he's, you know, around 35, 36, you know, probably something like that. But, uh, I mean, he's, you know, played with Andy Reid when he was in Philadelphia. I, I really like, you know, both of those guys. I mean, I know Jackson will sign super cheap probably somewhere. I know, uh, you know, Curtis Samuel will have a, you know, bigger market because he's one of the better wide receivers. But both of those guys can see. I think that's a possibility. And I think those would be great fits for both those players. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think Curtis Samuel is probably going to attract one of, if not the biggest, uh, market for wide receivers due to the fact that he he's not the best wide receiver on the market, but he's he's going to be probably one of the best value wide receivers. You're not he's not going to be making you know Kenny Galladay or Allen Robinson type money. He's not going to be making twenty plus million dollars, and we don't, we know that only like three or four teams are really going to be able to pay that player that much money. So you know Curtis Samuel is in a very good position because he's set to make around. You know, he's said to make close to around $10 million. He's not going to make a considerable amount of money. And there's a lot of teams that would be willing to offer that to get a wide receiver like Curtis Samuel who can come in and change your team completely. Um, you know, speaking of the Bengals, I think this is where the Bengals really insert their names into the conversation because we know that, you know, the Bengals, according to what we've heard, are pretty locked in on Pene Sewell, hopefully, uh, in the draft this year. Um, and, you know, I think there's also a scenario where we see um, them, you know, maybe look towards adding a wide receiver maybe later on. Uh, in the draft rather than it being a little bit earlier. So if you want to add a true wide receiver three, you look towards a guy like Curtis Samuel, who could be a very effective guy uh, for your team, uh, possibly in for a pretty solid deal, I think. Um, again, in other teams I look at, you know, Jacksonville Jaguars need a lot of help on the wide receiver core across from DJ Shark. I think that could be a very good fit for Curtis Samuel, possibly. And maybe even a team like the LA Rams, who are in dire need of a, a deep threat, according to what they've said. They've, they've been really looking to find a deep threat for their team uh, to, to complement along with Robert Woods and Cooper Cup. Um, they just added Matthew Stafford, uh, and they, I think they've been making a lot of uh, caps moves to try to get more money. Uh, I think that getting a guy like a Curtis Samuel, who can be a true deep threat for your team, could be the final factor for your team because you're likely to lose Josh Reynolds in free agency this year. So you really have those two main wide receivers in Cooper Cup and, and Robert Woods and not much else outside of that. Yeah, I would really like to see Curtis Samuel in Cincinnati. And you mentioned the Rams. The Rams, to me, um, I mean, obviously, you know, there's Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, you know, Juju Smith, the most overrated wide receiver in the league. Uh, but to me, I mean, Galladay and Marvin Jones, I, I would say more Marvin Jones because, you know, you mentioned the Rams trying to cut some people to get more cap space. Jones makes more sense because he's not going to be nearly as much. I think Marvin Jones could maybe go to the Rams because, you know, he already has familiarity with um, Stafford. And, you know, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup is probably one of the most underrated wide receiver duos in the league. And I mentioned Galladay. You know, with Mar uh, Marvin Jones, I think Galladay could possibly go to the Colts. I really like that one. And um, I think Juju Smith, I, there's a zero chance he gets to Pittsburgh, and I'm glad of it. Me. I think it's obvious, the Jets. I think it makes so much sense. There's no bigger market than New York. I mean, if you're getting that much media traction for no reason at all on commercials and everything like that, with freaking Pittsburgh, I, I cannot imagine what he's going to get. I mean, he's going to be 100 times more annoying when he goes to New York. But I, I do think it makes a lot of sense because New York doesn't really have that one, you know, star receiver. They have Denzel Mims, who I like a lot. You know, he's he, uh, hurt some this past season. The Jets have one of the uh, most uh, cap, uh, cap space in the NFL. They also play college with uh, college football with Sam Darnold. I know that would be interesting because, you know, Darnold could be traded. But I think Juju Smith um, to the, the Jets makes sense. Galladay, I, I like the Colts with him because, you know, they have a lot of cap space too. And they need a top um, wide receiver to help. Uh, Wentz out to have Michael Pittman. I like him. I mentioned I really like Marvin Jones to the Rams. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, for, just to start out, I think Marvin Jones is the perfect fit for the Rams as well. I agree with you. They need a deep threat. Marvin Jones would define that deep threat for their team. Um, as for Kenny Galladay, Colts, I think, would be a pretty solid fit. They need that true wide receiver one for your team. But also a team like Jacksonville Jaguars, who I already mentioned earlier with Dante Pettis, or excuse me, Curtis Samuel, um, who are in need of finding that 
possibly that number one receiver or a receiver next to DJ Shark would be ideal. And we, as we know, Jacksonville Jaguars have the most money, most cap space, and they're probably going to be able to offer the biggest contract to Kenny Galladay if they, in fact, want him. So I think, you know, getting a guy like Kenny Galladay could be a, a huge boost for Trevor Lawrence, uh, you know, getting that number one guy like that and possibly trying to build, you know, they already have a pretty solid offensive line now that they've gotten Cam Robinson back. You know, they're not terrible there. Um, and you add a guy like Kenny Galladay to you know, match up with other weapons like DJ Shark for that team. Uh, you could end up providing providing a pretty good uh, immediate offensive roster roster for a guy like Trevor Lawrence. I look at um, other guys uh, around free agency, like you said, Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, I, I like the Jets as a good fit there. Uh, like you mentioned, he, he played with Sam Donald in the past, but even then, he, I think he'd be a pretty good addition even for a quarterback like Zach Wilson because he, the ability for him to stay, you know, have that yards after catch early on uh, and while also being able to go deep. He's a pretty dynamic, dynamic receiver as well. Um, but another team I look towards you know, Juju Smith-Schuster probably trying to join is maybe the Las Vegas Raiders, a team that just caught Tyrell Williams or outside one of the main outside receivers and also have a guy, Nelson Aguilar, who is hitting free agency as well. So, you know, two of your top three guys there are hitting free agency. So you have Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller really being the only two main offensive weapons for your team. Adding a guy like Juju, who could be your number one guy on the for the wide receiver core at least, um, could be huge for a guy like Derek Carr who needs more offensive weapons to really succeed like he did last year.